So, fitness apps. We all love them, don't we? No. <laughs> So I can actually tell you how many like fitness apps are out there, um, a lot of which come from the same sort of foundation in regards to what they are selling. A lot of what they offer is looking into calorie intake, so coming from a nutritional um, standpoint and cal calorie, I can't even say it, calorie expenditure, um, so how much you're burning through copious amounts of different activities and that all formulates to how much you're going to track that so whether you're just tracking walking and just general everyday activity to exercise now whilst they can be of some value to people and depending on your goals and things like that um it's not a niche or a market for everyone and i think that's something that's so important to highlight especially when it comes to people who are suffering or have suffered from an eating disorder and still struggle with that sort of side of things purely from the standpoint of that it becomes obsessive um and it can be very detrimental to your well-being your mental health and your just overall physical health too now like i said it's not necessarily that it can't help a specific population group or a specific person it has its value in some respects um so for example if you are someone who has been advised to lose weight um it may be a helpful tool in just helping to sort of track that um but again that could also come with consequences of um, obsessive behaviors we are generally as a human race we follow trends um, we do things because other people are doing them and whilst that may, may be okay to some people i feel like seeing the bigger picture of things sometimes if you do it for so long you become to you start to pick up bad habits that are very hard to undo so things are very easy to pick up and it takes almost like twice as long to sort of kind of retrain ourselves to not do those behaviours. Someone from an eating disorder's point of view, it can be invaluable in regards to our progress, um, as well as just our general mental health and overall well-being. Now, I can't tell you how many years I used um, a specific uh, fitness app. Don't know if we're allowed to say it or not. I don't know what the rules are on this. It's not that I'm going to give a necessarily a biased view. Um, it's more of my opinion. Like I said, I feel like there's still value in um, some of these applications for specific population groups, but um, I am sort of critiquing its value in the population group that I'm targeting, which is eating disorders and um, specifically anorexia. So I used MyFitnessPal for God knows how many years, um, just literally tracking everything I ate. Um, and everything or every activity that I did um, to religiously every day whenever I had something it would go in there even if it was just like one crisp I would find it um, in the search category um, and if you guys don't know how fitness, my fitness pal works I will sort of show you uh, the process or just explain it a little bit um, but I'd find it and then I'd kind of put that portion in if it was possible or as close to as I could even if I overestimated it which is not a good thing either um, and we'll get into that in a second but I'd always put it in so basically it became very obsessive and I was sort of controlled by that and um, if anything was different to the day before I would be compensating for that by exercising more and again tracking that too so with my fitness pal and similar applications you can search um, or you can scan barcodes and things like that and it'll come up with the item that you're looking for um, and in regards to the exercise elements it has loads of different descriptions um, and you sort of just pick it pick one and then you do the time i think or reps whatever it has in there um, i believe it has cardio and strength um, uh, categories which you can choose by also has water intake and things like that and what they do is they simply well i have the free version so i'm not entirely sure what the uh membership or subscription one is um but i'm not investing in it so um i can tell you straight off the bat um so if you do know it'd be handy to put it in the comments below so that people can sort of see what you get just as just because i'm only going by the free subscription so this is what i use but that in itself 
there has been enough to elicit these bad behaviours. And so this is why I'm sort of umming and ahhing about whether it's beneficial for people to use or not in this population group. And my answer is no, really. <laughs> this is what we're going to get to. So immediately the problems that we can sort of see from this from the get go is the categories given and the constant tracking and the values that it gives. When you first go in, um, I put, I think I literally just put my height and my weight um, and that is just standard BMI measurement. And that in itself is an issue which will also influence the calories that are set up within whatever formula they've created for exercises and calories, etc. And it gives you like, I think it does sort of like a quiz at the beginning when you first join and it sort of says about your goals and things like that. Um, and you can sort of, change that for yourself and it would give you like a specific target to aim for um and it's very generic very very generic um as again this is only going by the free membership um but with only calculating from my height and my weight um my bmi and what calories i should be going for there is no consideration to my body composition so my muscle composition my body fat composition um my bone density the water that I may be retaining, how much um, water is in my body, um, and all those elements are going to massively influence caloric um, necessity and calorie expenditure. So that already is sort of an issue, um, and but we don't see that from the surface, obviously. So not ideal. But the next point would be to do with um, the. Let's go for the exercises because I feel like. I can just explain that now. I would always track mine um, and it always used to stress me out so, so much when I was kind of picking what I was, um, what I did that day because there's two kind of things that were quite stressful in regards to uh, how I chose what I did in these categories. So the categories, categories can be very, very broad um, and they give you a level of intensity by light moderate or vigorous and whatever you were doing now that in itself measuring effort by someone who has an eating disorder or just in general like i feel like it's really hard to gauge really how you you how hard you're working because you're going by personal uh your personal thought or personal thinking of how hard you were working and i know for me um i don't know if you guys um, agree with this also but for me I'd probably underestimate how hard I was working um, just because I always felt like I wasn't pushing myself enough and that was one of the major problems in, um, with my um, eating disorder and in general anyway um, and underestimating what I was doing um, would give essentially in this formula it would equate to less calories burned um, and that was an issue even if I was working harder and I was burning more calories, the fact that I put it at a lower intensity was going to reflect poorly in regards to, well, poorly I say, but for me, that I hadn't burned enough. Um, and so by gauging effort that way, I think that's really quite detrimental to actually what's going on. Um, and let's not forget things about like metabolic function and how that's actually working. Um, exercise type as well so whether you're performing resistance training or um, cardio um, but thermogenesis and things like that all them different factors that are not being considered through this app the, the accuracy of the information that you're being given um, is not going to be 100% and although it's just kind of like a nice thing to know it's also not because if you think that you haven't pushed yourself enough when really you have and actually probably excessively more because you're not fueling your body properly um, especially like I said um, I'm coming from the perspective of eating disorder and anorexia um, you're already kind of not in the best place anyway um, so I feel that that isn't going to help at all so the other thing that I was going to say is about they have so many choices in terms of what you're doing um and it's just really hard to gauge what's accurate and what you think is actually right or similar to what you're doing and that for someone with an eating disorder can be very stressful it's kind of like going to the supermarket um, and having all these choices or if your choice isn't there what you'd normally get it sort of throws you off um 
and so that could be really stressful and if you type it in and then you see the calories associated to that activity and it's not what you thought it would be um if it's lower in this case then you just be like well brilliant I haven't done anything today and you just you're kind of rating your effort and your performance um on a number rather than actually looking at how well you thought you did and just internally thinking I actually had a really good session today and that made me feel really good you're just comparing comparing it to a number and that is not getting you anywhere in your recovery you want to come out of the gym doing something because you enjoyed it and not being devalued by a number so i feel like that just doesn't really help so the exercise side of things and tracking can be a super stress it can be super stressful and i just would not recommend it at all like you need to base your efforts on how well you how well you did in that session and not every session has to be associated to the kind of effort that we associate it to so by that i mean heart like intensity having a sweat on everyone sweats at different rates so sweat isn't necessarily an indication of how hard you've worked um and the type of session you're going for like it doesn't always have to be high intensity go 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 to show that you've had an effective workout it doesn't really work like that um so yeah i feel like it's hindering a lot in that way now from like the nutritional side of things um it was just very obsessive for me i feel like if i type something in and the calories came up and again they'd give you multiple options with like very similar descriptions but calories would be different and then that would be stressful because you'd be like do you overestimate how many calories that you've eaten um if you don't hit the same number compared to the day before is that going to stress you out my answer was definitely yes to that if i had anything over i'd compensate and go for a run like it got to the point where i was like i've ate an olive i've got to go do like a 5k run now because that's gonna stay in my body and just make me huge like that is insane and i feel like it sort of stimulates for me it stimulated negative behaviors and it was just constantly if i don't track that um I, if I, I i'm just and it was also just sort of like if it wasn't in my fitness power if it wasn't actually on their system or whatever um i couldn't have or i didn't eat what it was because if i didn't know the calories of it and it didn't resemble exactly that then i was not having it it's like even if i scanned it and i read both the packaging as well as what had on my fitness power if they didn't, didn't match i couldn't trust it and it was like a no-go um and then like i said in terms of like them calculating how many calories you should be having um that can be like i must hit that i've got to hit that if i don't hit that bad things are going to happen and that's exactly my thought process in terms of what i was going through with it so if you are in recovery um from your eating disorder i just would urge you to kind of consider not getting the app or if you have it delete it delete it for a while you don't need to keep doing that to yourself it took me a while to sort of like get into like not tracking um and also like i kept on deleting the app and then reinstalling it and they went that went on for a good while but day by day even if you did like one day on one day off just to start with i feel like it can be a massive weight sort of lifted off your shoulders and if anything i think one day i was just like you know what i'm just i can't do it i'm not tracking anymore because it's just not doing anything for me and it's stressing me out more than it needs to i also felt like it would sort of go hand in hand so if i like did my exercises and it didn't equate to the calories that i wanted to burn or whatever um i would compensate in restricting my food and being like okay well i can't have that i'm not gonna have that and kind of working the two with each other um in a negative way um and even like going out for dinner or going out with friends <laughs> like that used to be a really scary thing too because i'd sort of put into my fitness power like if i was going out for dinner and they didn't have the nutritional <clears throat> values on the menu or you couldn't look it up or whatever that was a real struggle because again it would just be generic things and you'd be like someone say like 200 calories someone say 1000 or over a thousand or whatever and it just sort of played that mind game in terms of like can and can't eat stuff um 
and to be ruled by that is not healthy in the slightest um, and that takes again like I said it takes away the enjoyment of everything and what you've worked so hard to achieve for me personally I don't feel like there's a place for it in my life um, and although I still very much like have times where I do like I'm very wary of like still like it's not like I said if this is not like a a quick fix thing um but I am still very well aware of like my calorie intake um but by having that extra stimulus there would probably have actually done me no favors at all in fact I think it would have made it worse um I feel like by not having that and not having to think I've got to write that down and that's gonna be a constant reminder of what I ha like have eaten um it's just one less stimulus for that um and I can just go blase and just be like I'm not looking up the calories I'm just gonna eat it and then I'll figure out the rest of that sort of stuff later and again like with my exercising and stuff I go to the gym more so now just training purely for enjoyment and how I'm feeling on that day like yes I set up my sessions sometimes but if I don't if it doesn't come to fruition when I'm there I'll do something else like I feel like I've become so much more relaxed in that sense not all the time but a lot more so now a lot lot more so now um and by just constantly tracking that and associating that to calories was super super um harmful harmful for me and super inaccurate too um, and this is sort of where the science comes into this as well like in terms of if you were going for a weight session you're not it's like the type of training that you're doing will depend on the expenditure that you burn but it's not about burning the calories from in in regards to this population group that is not the goal the goal is to sort of eliminate that and not focus on calorie burn but focus on performance and that should be across the board in general i have emphasized this in other videos the fact of training should be done for mental health and feeling good and performance um and then effectively nourishing your body um with the appropriate calories that are needed so I kind of wanted to sort of like maybe like exacerbate or prove this point a little bit more um so I actually today's session I used my heart rate monitor and I downloaded an app was iCardio um and it literally only it, it I have the free one because I'm not paying um because no <laughs> I'm not investing in this uh, thing I had to like um stop it every 10 minutes um throughout my session um so I could get my heart rate values and the calories that um equated to that those heart rate zones so it tracked how many calories I burned based on my heart rate it actually came out to I believe so for let's say for example I think I was working I was there for about an hour or just over an hour let's just say 45 50 minute session so actual active work whatever oh and also this kind of makes up another point in that there isn't a linear response to working for a longer period of time and improvements in performance so it doesn't matter if you're there for an hour you could get a really effective workout in in 20 minutes um compared to staying in the gym for an hour or two you will get to a point where progressions are just not going to be happening from that session um and it's in the literature it's a very well researched area and it was sort of like point proven today because i felt like i planned out a session and i was like i got there and i did most of it but i didn't finish it all but i came out feeling super like good about my session so although i didn't fully finish it because dom's hit me like massively hard i actually was like i actually feel fine i actually feel pretty good I am feeling tired and this is the right time to sort of check out um, and changed up as I went and I felt good um, but based on this app and my heart rate it told me I think it equated to around 186 calories that I burned now whoa so today's session I did like a mix so I did like um, focused on resistance as well as cardio so I did every resistance exercise I did I paired it with like a cardio plyometric movement um, and so yeah 186 calories that that equated to now if i said about the literature or linked to the literature partly it makes sense because 
weight sessions won't necessarily give you a high calorie burn compared to like a cardio session. Obviously this depends on multiple factors like in regards to intensity and things like that but there is proven knowledge that resistance training workouts burn off less calories during that period of time. Things happen afterwards but we'll talk about that another time. Um, so that told me that I was burning 186 calories in that session. Now, when I put this into my fitness pal, if I find the correct values, and immediately I'd like just run into problems because I've got a circuit training thing. And would I classify what I did today with a circuit training? Probably not. We've got some strength training in here. So again, very generic. It literally just says strength training, weight lifting, weight training. So... not ideal and like i said it just takes into no consideration like, any other factors other than your height and your weight and your age and that is what categorizes how many calories are associated to that so just think how generalized that is it's an important point see like this is already stressing me out because i can't really and i don't really know how to divide that because i can accurately say how many minutes like, I know I did the, like, 45 to 50 minute session, but, like, I wouldn't necessarily say it's, like, an even split because some of my sets were longer. Right. Okay. I'm just going to do it as, like, an even split and say, let's say I did 30 minutes of strength training. And then I did, so for exercise in terms of cardio, so I was doing like plyometric movements, uh, so like squat jumps, sidestep jumps, uh, burpees and things like that. <sighs> like swimming leisurely in general, like what, what category is that? So let's see if they have plyometrics. Nope. Uh, it wasn't exactly running either. Uh, I mean they have hit, but like even class is hit because my I don't even want to put it as circuit training see I'm having a right kerfuffle here see, this is what was stressing me out on the daily because I just can I can tell you the accuracy is just too much they may have the heart rate thing on the uh like if you pay for it I'm not doing um so that may give more of an accurate thing but just in general like from the free app it has like the running pace so like 13.8k but like there's no indication of actually like your cardiovascular um endurance or capacity and everyone's is different and if you're like that could be easy to someone or for someone else it could be really hard so that's not accurate either okay i'm literally just going to put it as um calisthenics because that is just what i'm going to do and this is mild, mild or light to moderate effort or vigorous. I'm going to go for just like a vigorous, but for like 20 minutes. So that will give like a relatively even split. And that has calculated out as 261 calories. So already there is a difference. Like I said, the accuracy of that also is probably not that great. Um, based on the absolute kerfuffle that I just had with trying to... Uh, put it into a category of what one's right and what one isn't. The fact that that has differences um, is an issue because that 100 or whatever calories is quite significant to someone with an eating disorder and even if there's not, if you can't see like similarities in things, it, that in itself is really stressful because naturally I'd probably, for me personally, I would go for the one that gave, said that I burned less calories um, because I'd say, well, I'm going to go push myself harder because I didn't obviously work that hard. Um, and so you're just sort of devaluing yourself um, and kind of putting all of your like self-worth and self-efficacy into a numeric value. And that is not going to do anything for your recovery. Um, if anything, it's going to make you regress or I feel like it made me regress and I was not enjoying it. I really was not. Now, although this is literally like a very simplistic, not again, like I said, the accuracy and all of this isn't going to be that ideal. Um, but 
in that it's just sort of showing where the potential dangers are um, in having these sort of apps. Um, and again, like I said, like it does work for some people um, and it's not, this isn't to sort of bash these companies because they obviously have a niche market um, and a specific population group um, that they're targeting. And I do find with all of these sort of apps um, is that a lot of the time, most of the time anyway, um, the target has always been in the exercise industry of weight loss and that isn't everyone's goal. Um, and I feel like driving always towards physical modifications and physical goals isn't the answer, um, especially with this population group that we're dealing with. Um, I feel performance should always be top. Realistically, we're not all bodybuilders, but that's not all of our goals to, you know, where physique is sort of, well, it's primary essentially um, and building that muscle having low body fat percentage that is not what we are aiming for this is lifestyle changes this is um, consistent change this is to do with sustainable change um, rather than just for a temporary time um, and it's not going to help you get better by valuing yourself on a number um i feel like you need to go and do your thing and do it because you want to feel better and work on things because you want to feel better um rather than just constantly chasing the aesthetics and it's so hard especially in this day and age as well like i said in other videos in following that trend and like trying to get the goal of other people but we fail to actually see the realism in that things such as um biology um and genetics um and just actually is that really what you want like i might not want that but i think this just comes from the sense of like you're living in your mind you've got to do things that are making you happy and you don't have to have the same goal as everyone else like just getting to the gym sometimes is enough um and doing things for yourself is enough and that's going to get you further than trying to have all the do all these things because you think it's the right thing to do um when it's just hindering you in the process so if this is something that is really um if you have if you do have the app or an, a fitness app consider its value in your life and what it's doing i think it's always important to reflect on that um if you feel like it's helping then you know who am i to say otherwise um but if you feel like it really isn't doing you any favours and it is actually hindering your progress, then reconsider it um, and just don't be controlled by that value or controlled by a numerical thing because it's not important. I really keep going off tangent, um, but uh, I think that's my rundown for the day. I haven't actually really put any scientific evidence to this. Um, which I will. Um, what I'll probably do is post that on my Instagram as that might be a little bit more of a valuable substance rather than just listening to me natter all the time. I might natter on there, haven't decided yet, but we'll see. But this was just a very simple, quick sort of comparison thing. Why is my finger so bent? But I think it was a really important thing to do, especially with the gyms reopening now and people feeling like they need to compensate um, or if you feel like you need to compensate for what you have or haven't done, um, just like take it easy like take it easy because you don't want to be going stepping back in especially after like a water shitter this year has been not for all some people have had a very good time but i cannot say that for myself don't focus on that go into the gym because it makes you feel good do the thing that makes you feel good stop when necessary when it's not making you feel good and just Take a break take it easy um sorry it wasn't that great again i will get better at doing these videos um i'm just trying to like warm myself up in terms of my confidence and just like making sense of my words because i i can't even string a sentence together half the time i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it sort of gave you a little bit of encouragement or just making me think a little bit about little things that we can get rid of to help us move forward i don't know what i'm gonna do now i guess edit this video um because it's so terrible but um yes i will see you again soon and have a lovely day evening 
what other things are there afternoon whatever <laughs> um, but I will see you again soon